Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. and today I'm reviewing Ragnarok from Grey Fox Games. Ragnarok is a two-player abstract game from the designer of Santorini, from Gordon Hamilton, I want to say. Gordon Hamilton, and it's a game which you're going to be playing as well, these little Vikings on this board. The general idea is you're trying to enclose off your own little areas using these little rune stones to be able to create the largest area in which you have the most control over the board state. On your turn, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and move a Viking as far as you can in a straight line, unimpeded by anything from either other Vikings or alternately from the rune stones themselves. So for example, I can go ahead and move a Viking like so, and then you can go ahead and generate a rune stone, pushing it out from where you are to any other Viking, to anywhere spawn on the board, again, unimpeded. So for example, I can go ahead and shove this rune stone down over there. The other opponents are going to go ahead and respond, of course, because no one wants to have their rune stone little uh, drama passed out over there. So he'll pop over here, and he'll extend a rune stone over there, nice and simply blocking me off. From there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that he's kind of locked in, Bop, dropping over there, dropping over there. He's nice and enclosed, that's totally fine, but this guy's not quite as enclosed. He's going to pop all the way down over here, and then pop a runestone down over here. You're slowly going back and forth, creating these little sections of runestones as players try to react and adapt to the constantly shifting game state. So I'm going to pop down over here to make sure I'm more blocked off, while also keeping this one down over here. They're going to try to see if they can actually... Ooh, he's already a little trapped over here, so be careful. So this one's going to go ahead and pop down over here here and then pop a moonstone down here like so i have a chance to respond to that so i'm going to go ahead and ricochet back over here pushing him off knocking that in place uh, people are going back and forth on this board trying to create these moonstones until eventually what's going to happen is things are going to result in such a way that a player is completely settled in an area. This is now a settled area with a settled viking, and this is worth the points equal to the number of spaces here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 spaces in this settled area. The game is going to continue until players either cannot take their moves, or alternately until every single area is settled, or possibly wild, you can have situations such as like this, where you have an opportunity where people are completely enclosed, but nobody else can do anything to that. That will happen. Nobody will score points for that. But as you continue to to create these areas and these gaps, eventually you'll have the board say changing to a point where there, that's the end of the game. White will score for this area and this area, red will score for this area, and red, just because of the sheer number of spaces, would win. That is most of what's happening in Ragnaroks. The other things that are happening in Ragnaroks is this giant deck of cards. This giant deck of cards over here, giving you all of these cards and all of these abilities because everything I just told you is the simple accessible game, but not the main point of why you're playing, although Honestly, it's a good game in and of itself, but these cards are where things are going to be mixed up even further. This is where you'll have some crazy cards that'll be thrown into the mix. Oh my gosh, Stein, this one, this one's an insane one. But you're going to have a whole bunch of cards thrown into the mix that give you different powers and abilities to each side. So you're going to give each character a card, and that card will define how that character acts in the game, giving them a way that that breaks the game. We have Bragi over here. Before moving, you may make a move with one opponent's Viking that is adjacent to your selected Viking. So over here, if you have an opportunity where you have a setup over here, and I'm currently red, I can go ahead and pop white. I can have white move somewhere which is disadvantageous for them. I can go ahead and pop over here, and then go ahead and create my own little move because of Raji's ability. So every character is going to have an ability that will completely change the game state. We have, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that over here, but we have Freya's Horse. When summoning, your selected Viking can only summon in an adjacent hex. If you summon adjacent to an opponent's Viking, you may make an additional move with your selected Viking. So a little bit of control in terms of extra movement, but also at a restriction, and you have an entire deck full of cards, each with an ability that changes or breaks the way the game plays. And these can range from small modifications that are meaningful, small but meaningful, to just things that completely change the game. That little uh, deer thing I saw I said over here earlier, this one is all your Vikings move, but instead of being able to place runestones out as normal, you pull the runestones out from the location you're actually in, and only the location you're in. So if it's all Vikings move, but you drop off a runestone in every area you left, so you have to kind of think two turns ahead, but you have the control of having extra Vikings move. Lots of ways to break the game, lots of different changes to it, but that is the core deck of cards over here, and that's that's Ragnarok. The general goal is to have as large a space as possible while trying to use the abstract nature of the game as well as the powers and abilities that this deck provides to be able to keep a constantly fluctuating game, a constantly fluctuating game that gives you different ways to approach the same puzzle again and again and again, which brings us to the review starting off with ease of play. Rules are incredibly simple. You're talking about two pages of rules, not a lot to go through, Although the rulebook does have uh, characters listed in them, although I don't know why, because almost all the characters in the rulebook, from what I can see, they just word for word repeat the text on these cards. There's no clarification. Maybe they just wanted a thicker rulebook. I don't know why. 
the game itself is very easy. It's like two pages of rules, very easy to dive in, very easy to play. It teaches in four or five minutes, and it plays in ten minutes per match. And it's the kind of game where you play five, six, seven matches in a row as you constantly try to figure out how to get one over on your opponent, and then either switching out to two new characters entirely, or alternatively going back and forth, swapping sides to see, hey, I know you won this matchup, but what happens if we switch it around? Would you still win again? As far as what I like, don't like, and can see others not liking, this, like I said already, teaches in five minutes, plays in ten plays in 10 and gives you back-to-back -back rewarding plays, making this a lot of fun in what it's doing, and it's a simple abstract puzzle that is engaging even before you dive into, you know, powers and abilities. The simple core abstract puzzle going on at the table is is very compelling, it's very solid, it's one that you just, you're trying to move around the board and trying to create these walls in order to further subdivide territories in a way that most, it keeps yourself, it keeps it most advantageous for yourself while trying to make sure your opponent can't actually respond properly. It is simple, it is, it's clean, it's just a good solid abstract, that gets only better when you throw in the fact that it's constantly variable because of the tons of cards you have in play. Some powers are more or less fun than others, for sure. Some are going to be game-breaking abilities, some are going to be, you know, wins to win to conditional win changes, conditional ways to win the game. There's going to be a ton of cards, though, that just change the way you interact. And it's not just having the variety of the cards, the variety of the pair-ups matter as well. How one power matches and plays off another is totally different depending on the powers at play. There's just a huge amount of variety in an already solid abstract title. As far as what I don't like in the game, first of all, I'm really not a fan of the Viking miniatures. In, in fact, production in general has a few issues. The first is I just don't like these Viking miniatures. I, I really want to 3D print or find something else. I love these runestones. These are excellent over here. And this, by the way, is the deluxe version of the game, so you have to factor in what you get over there. But I do not like these minis. I want I want something else. These are two, two cartoonized in a way that is not charming. Contrasted with Santorini, the other game from Gordon Hamilton, I just don't like the Viking miniatures over there. And even this uh, this uh, board over here, like Santorini before, I usually don't bother using it. I almost always have this game set up on the table. I don't care for this thing over here. It doesn't balance perfectly. You have to kind of push the table down. I just like it on the table. It does the job just fine over here like this. I don't need this uh, production over here, which just kind of gets in the way. And quality is not that great. So production-wise is a mix. Uh, the board itself is fine. The, the, the runestones are fantastic. Some of the extra components totally fine, but I just don't like the Viking miniatures and feel this is completely unnecessary. And then secondly is I wish the board were more variable in terms of the puzzle it provides. I like the game a lot and the variety you get from these I love, but even just like, you know, the ability to have you printed something else on the back side of this board, they give you like a plain side and an artsy side, but I would have loved to have some actual, actual opportunities for different boards to mix this up further because right now you do find that sometimes the opening moves can become a bit stale or static, depending on mixing up with the characters, but I wish there were more board variety in a game that gives you a ton of variety uh, otherwise. As far as I can see others not liking, first of all, if you don't like abstract games, this is very much an abstract game, but past the obvious, I would say there's also imbalance potential in these cards. You will find matchups where you get a card that just the power doesn't work well against the card you're playing against, and you might find that frustrating. The good news is matches are 5-10 to 10 minutes, and you can quickly rinse and reset, just scoop and continue on with another game, but but if you don't like that potential imbalance that you may find yourself in, it will happen. Sooner or later, it will happen to you. As far as final thoughts on Ragnaroks, this is actually a game I did a playthrough and review like a year ago uh, when I was doing the, the when, when I had the prototype coverage for the game. But the game has changed since then. They've added more powers. We're in its final production. This is more of a dedicated, just straight up review of this one. I really like what it's doing. I liked it a lot when I played it the first time, and I really like it now. I, I've got, I got it, it arrived, it showed up, and I continue to do what I did when I had the prototype, which is play game after game after game. Just the powers and abilities, the variety you have, combined with a simple 5-10 to 10 minute game, 10-15 to 15 minute game, let's call it, it just gives you so much fun to just go at it again and again and again and just play a game. This is the kind of game I, I've already played it multiple times, 5, 7, 8 times in a single session, just continuing to dive into it. I really enjoy the core abstract puzzle that you have here as you move Vikings around the board, popping up little runestones, trying to figure out where your opponent's weak points are, trying to be mindful not to get caught out in your own weak point. It's just a good game for you to go back and forth with somebody else who enjoys an abstract puzzle, one with a bit of uh, varieties and abilities mixed into the experience. As far as other game recommendations, 
Did I review this? Did I rank it? It's a 4 to 5. 4 to 5 for me. I really, really like this one. As far as other game recommendations, first of all, Santorini. Mentioned this already, but if you like Ragnaroks, I think you'll enjoy Santorini from the same designer. Same basic idea, giving you a solid abstract puzzle, and then powers and abilities mixed into the experience. And then secondly, Terra Nova. Terra Nova is one that I actually got rid of Terra Nova because of Ragnaroks. It gave you the, the same tactical puzzle as far as moving around and building walls, but without the variety of just a giant deck of powers and abilities, making Ragnaroks the better choice for me, but I really enjoy Terra Nova, and I really enjoy Ragnaroks as well. In any case, then until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you found this video helpful, and as always, I hope you have a good one.